Hey guys, hope you're all doing good. So we have actually created uh, the 3D model of our uh, valve, cam and rocker arm assembly. So now we are ready to set up the motion analysis. So to get started, make sure you go to SOLIDWORKS add-ins and then make sure that motion, SOLIDWORKS motion is enabled. So then go to motion study one. And then we are just going to select this animation and modify this to motion analysis. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the cam, right? And we're going to do this by adding a motor. So let's click on motor. And uh, what we're going to do is for the component, we're just going to select this particular axis. You can see that the direction appears. Now for the RPM, we are just going to put in a value of 1200. And then let's click on OK. So the next thing that we need to do is enable contacts. So let's go to contacts. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select this particular component and this component and uh, with respect to contact we need to assign materials so let's select steel dry so we're going to use the same material property for now and then let's just click on ok similarly we are going to set up the contacts between the push rod and the rocker arm we are going to be using the same material connections again so select steel for both the bars and then let's click on ok Next, it's going to be between the rocker arm and the valve. So let's select that guy, select the valve, and make sure that uh, the material property is the same. Let's go ahead and change it to steel. Now you can try changing this. Uh, we are just trying to follow a standard here. In real life, the material is going to be probably different for each and every component. So then finally, we need to add a spring. Uh, this is called as the valve spring, and this is responsible for the valve to come back. So let's click on spring and we are going to make sure that we have selected linear spring and we are going to be selecting two edges where the spring is going to sit right so this is one edge and then this is the other edge right when you do that you can see that uh, you get a preview of the spring now this is not the real spring this is just a preview that solidworks generates now sometimes you can see that the selection uh, looks a bit weird the spring might look inclined but that should typically not affect your simulation, right? So if your spring is inclined, don't worry about it. So that is just for the purpose of preview. Now you can see that the distance, the free length is 35 millimeters. So that's the free length of the spring, right? Now in real life, um, the spring is actually pre-tensioned, right? That means the spring is compressed a little bit when the valve is actually closed, right? And this pretension can be given in terms of a length. So let's change this free length to 45 millimeters. So that means currently the spring is pretensioned by 10 millimeters. That's what it means. And uh, to show that SolidWorks changes the color of the spring to red. Now this is a very important step. If you don't have pretension, the valve is going to be extremely loose when it's closed. This is just for uh, graphical purposes. There are options to make the spring better looking. You can change that if you want to. Now I think we are all set, so we should be able to go ahead and uh, run the simulation. So let's click on calculate. And you can see that the simulation runs fine. And you can see that how the cam's motion is transferred through the push rod to rocker arm and all the way up to the valve. So let's just stop the simulation right now. And we are now going to plot the results. So let's click on results and plots. And what we're going to do is we are interested in looking at the displacement of the valve. So let's uh, select linear displacement. And we are going to basically be using the magnitude option. And then let's click on OK. And you can see that the valve profile immediately appears. Now the plot looks a bit weird. It, it's quite non-uniform, right? Now this is not ideal, right? One of the reasons this is actually happening is uh, a, the material property has not been defined. So it could be that SOLIDWORKS is internally assuming materials that are not ideal for this type of problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to select everything, right click, and then we're going to select material. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click on edit materials. And this is like a comprehensive list. And we are looking for plain carbon steel. There it is. And let's, uh, just click apply but before you do that you can just look at the material properties 
right uh, if you want you can change the unit systems but uh, that's not required in this particular case and you can see that all the properties are there so that's one thing you need to check sorry before you select a material make sure that all the important material properties like density shear modulus yield strength and all of those are specified now not all of them are going to be used in the calculation but it's important to make sure that they are all defined so once you click apply hit close now the materials would have been applied now in order to kind of indicate this material change the color has been modified now if your computer has a good graphics card you will be able to see this uh, a bit more clearly so now we are going to make an additional change uh, so we are interested in uh, getting an output every crank angle right so this means you need to change the output frames per second now we are going to do another change we know that our cam is rotating at 1200 rpm and uh, if we are interested in getting an output at every crank angle meaning if you are trying to resolve the system so that you get the lift for every crank angle then you need to increase the frames per second now 1200 rpm in degrees per second is going to be 7200 degrees per second so what we are going to do is we are going to change the frames per second or uh, the output frequency by clicking on uh, motion steady properties and instead of 25 we are going to put in a value of 7200 frames per second so this is going to capture uh, every crank angle and once I enable precise contact I'm just going to click on OK now this is going to slow down your simulation for sure right now the other thing we need to do is we don't have to run this for five seconds right it's too long so what we are going to do is we are going to modify the end time of the simulation so to do that so right click on this particular keyframe and unclick on edit key time and type in a value of 0 0.2 seconds and then click on ok now this is going to shorten your uh, timeline but don't worry we are going to have 7200 uh, frames per second hit calculate now click on yes and then this is going to take a lot of time you can see that the simulation is very slow but it's highly resolved you can see a lot of details that's because you're uh, providing um, data set 7200 times a second and now suddenly you can see that everything has been collapsed right and this is happening probably because of the spring stiffness so now let's just stop this guy right and this is happening because of the stiffness being very low right and that's because the spring stiffness is set to one newton per millimeter right which is very very low right and that is why the system is kind of uh, getting ripped apart so we need to make sure that any material property and uh, mechanical property be realistic so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to modify uh, the spring stiffness for the spring that we have created so let's right click on the linear spring and click on edit feature and you can see that this is and we're going to change this to 10 newton per millimeter and let's click on ok and we're going to run the calculation one more time right if the spring is not stiff then it can easily be pushed in and it's not going to offer any resistance so now you can see that when we assign the right value of stiffness it pushes the rock arm back in the desirable way right so it's very important to add the right mechanical properties and the material properties uh, you know to make sure that the results are accurate or actually what you will be doing is you'll be following this particular video and then uh, you will be making sure that you get some results so now we can go ahead and make some plots so let's go to results and plots and we are going to select displacement in category and uh, subcategory we are going to select linear displacement and we are going to click on magnitude now the first component that we are going to select is the bottom face of the push rod so we are going to see how far that actually moves upward so click ok and you will see the plot now you can see that this plot is far more uniform right so you are getting repeatable uh, lifts and this is what you need when you are actually making an engine right because if this is not the case then your intake stroke is going to be completely different each and every time the engine runs which you don't want so we are just going to right click and go to chat properties and uh, we are going to go to title and uh, let's just uncheck use feature name and type in a value uh, linear displacement of push rod 
looks like there's a typo let me just correct that and then let's click on ok now you can see that the plot has been updated so we're going to filter our settings and we're going to go to results and uh, you can just right click and you can just uh, select uh, the rename option we're not going to be worrying about it right now right so now next we are going to measure the linear displacement of the valve so we have already done this before so right click and click on show plot when you do this you can see the valve lift profiles and you can see that it's highly repeatable and it looks much better because of the higher frames per second that we have set up right so then we are going to now export these two plots into an excel sheet so let's just uh, reduce the size of this particular plot now in order for you to export the plots the plots need to be visible so right click on the plot click on export to spreadsheet and if you have excel installed and this is automatically going to open up microsoft excel and it's going to show you the data set and also the plot so let's just give it some time for it to go you know do the conversion and load it in excel because there's a lot of data set that it needs to transport right so this is what i'm talking about so now you can see that the data is completely available in excel including the plot now what you will be doing is uh, for your challenge you will be uh, making multiple plots uh, but in order to do that you will be exporting uh, multiple data sets to microsoft excel for different operating conditions and then you will finally be comparing the results in microsoft excel now in this case you can see that the entire data set is uh, available right so you have about uh, 1640 frames so and that is what is being plotted here as well all right so with that i would like to conclude this video and we'll see you guys in the next one bye